Warning, this con report contains adult language, crazy panel descriptions, unique cosplay designs, stressed out Zans, and a really weird surprise. Listener discretion is advised. Spirekin Con Report, Bodicon 2018. Hello and welcome to Spirekin's Convention Report. This is your host Zans, and konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Yes! We're back from another fun-filled con report, and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Spirekin is some podcast and vanguard reviews about connecting enhanced narratives. Every episode, I'll talk about one or two topics and tell you the pros and cons about it. For this, for these con reports, we'll talk about how the con was, the attendees were, the panels were, and if it's worth going to in the future or not. You don't have to agree with anything that I or my co-host say. We try to be educational, entertaining, informative, and most importantly, non-biased. Doesn't happen all the time, but it happens a lot. And if you want to hear about any of the other conventions that we've reviewed, or any of the other podcasts we've done, including our movie review, our manga review, our video game review, our game review, or our TV show review, you can check them out at www.spirekin.com. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Stitcher, iTunes Music, Spotify, YouTube, PSN. Just type in at Spirekin, you can find us. And also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email me personally at zan, that's X-A-N, at Spirekin, S-P-I-R-A-K-N, dot com. So with that in mind, let's get to the review at hand. And we're talking about a really unique convention that is arguably one of the biggest conventions in the United States and one of the ones which focuses on the best part of the anime fandom, and that is Japanese culture in general. And what am I talking about? I am talking about Otakon. Now, Otakon has been around for many years. It was it's moved around a lot. Two years ago, it moved from Baltimore, Maryland to Washington, D.C., which is in the District of Columbia, the capital of the United States. Uh, it is currently held at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center from August 10th to 12th, 2018. And this is one of those conventions which I always recommend people go to because it is one of those bigger conventions. It's like AX, Anime Expo. It's one of those ones that you have to go to just once because of it, the way it feels, the way it's set. And this is that convention. This is one of the bigger ones and one of the greater ones. This year we had an attendee of 29,000, which is a decent amount. And it felt a little more organized this year, a little more together. It wasn't as barren or crazy or empty. And there's a lot to do. One thing I will say, though, is that compared to Maryland, the food options are a little more unique here, but they're more expensive. I mean, you can find German food. You can find Ethiopian food. You can find fast food if you're looking for it, but that's not what you really want to get. There's smoked dogs. That is the big thing in Washington, D.C. They're hot dogs, frankfurters, wieners, however you want to call them, but they're smoked. Kind of interesting. A little good, a little chilly, a little hurting your stomach, but decent. And there's a lot of other good food in the area. Now, you don't want to hear me talk about some of the food that's in the area. You want to hear me talk about the convention itself. Now, this convention, uh, it's my, I think, fifth or sixth time going to Otakon. And I've got to say, this was a very unique experience because of two reasons. One, I was supposed to meet up halfway with Greta. She was actually going to come down from our new home. We'll get into that in a little bit. We were supposed to go. She's going to meet me down at Otakon and we were going to have a blast. So my problem was that because of my own stupidity, well, let's just say that she missed her flight and I had to do the con alone. So that kind of sucked. Also sucked because I was in the middle of a con- concert when she missed her flight because the music group that was awesome here was Distant Worlds, the music from Final Fantasy, and I won a free ticket. So we got to check out the Distant World. I could have met Nobuo and that would have been amazing. I mean, Nobuo Umezo, the guy who made all the Final Fantasy music would have been great. And I missed the encore, which was <sighs> One Winged Angel. I had to walk out to deal with the phone and deal with the stupid airlines because of that, and it was a it was a nightmare. But that's me bitching about it. So let's talk about the con now, shall we? Yes. So as I said, Otakon, you get there, it's a little bit of a different vibe. It's kind of busy, but not too busy. Compared to the other two conventions we had this year, I've got to say, this one seemed a little more empty because of the size of the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. It's actually two buildings with an underground, so it's kind of, it's big. And there was a lot going on, a lot of crazy stuff happening at this convention, and you had a lot of insane guests. I mean, besides Notoboshi Kana, you had Shoji Kawamori from Macross, the mecha designer, yes. You had Masaya Matsukaze, Erica Mendez, uh, Pixel Pants. You actually had men at arms, guys who make weaponry. They were at they were at this event, which was really weird. But you know, you had uh, Arnie and Eric Roth there. You had Yo Yajinari. You had the president, the president of Studio Trigger. I've met him before. We've talked about him on several podcasts. It was cool to see him at 
Anyway, Boston. And you had the Washington Philharmonics, who was doing all the stuff from uh, Final Fantasy. So that was kind of a blast. That was really a blast to, to hear them. But now, and these guests brought a lot of unique talent. I've got to say, I would like some more talent. Especially because the theme seemed to be mechs and uh, robots. That seemed to be the big theme of this year. It was robots, so we focused on a lot of the mech designs and things like that. It, it led to a lot of things. Having the guy who made so much Macross designs there. Pretty awesome. The only thing that would have been better was if the Yaz was there. But, again, you're here or there. So, let's talk about this. So, we're there Friday. Friday is pretty happening, pretty hopping. Not actually, not really hopping, but it was a little, little out there. Because you had a lot going on. You had a lot of interesting convention stuff happening. The big events for me was Hockey, How to Volleyball. They had a panel about Hockey and explaining how to volleyball using Hockey for it. Pretty cool. America, according to anime and manga, a little bit similar to my Gaijin panel, but more focusing on the United States and the whole thing where they focus on us all as big, fat, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people. You had the Dark Horse Manga panel. That one was a decent industry panel. Not as varied as I expected, but pretty good. You had uh, the Distant Worlds panel, the music from Final Fantasy, which, we've got to say, was epic. But the big thing, the big thing, the big news, the weird news, happened on Friday. Because Friday, uh, as I've talked about in several of my cons, there's a little hidden thing we don't talk about. A meetup with a lot of creators that happens. It's a hangout session, a uh, whole thing. But, someone showed up at this event with big news. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Ed Chavez, former vice president of marketing for Vertical Comics, a manga publisher that we at Spirekin totally love to pimp out. We love their stuff and we love talking about it. And he's been disappeared a couple years ago. And since then, let's admit, some of the quality of the releases and also their showmanship at conventions has dropped dramatically because... Ed Chavez is a machine. He's crazy. He goes all out. And this was phenomenal because of what happened. Because at the event, he had some big news. Huge news. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know I went crazy when this happened. And what is the big news? Well, he's back. More importantly, he's back with a new manga publisher that he and some other associates are starting. Denpa Publishing, or Denpa Books. A cool new company... That is going to be releasing digital first, and then hopefully, if enough people, hint, hint, guys, buy it online, buy it, we'll get some real releases in real stores, including in Barnes & Nobles, in, well, Barnes & Nobles is just it, there are no other real bookstores, it's a manga, unless you go to some of the weird niche bookstores, but yes, you'll get it in the Amazon bookstore in a book form if you push for it, and this is great, because they have some great titles. I mean, you have An Invitation from a Crab, Made in Railways, Future Log, Inside Mari, Pez, and the one that really made me happy. A manga I reviewed a long time ago that I'm really psyched about. Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji. Kaiji is coming to the United States officially, legally, in the U.S. by Denpa Books. So if you like Kaiji, if you like reading about a crazy guy who has to do uh, restricted rock, paper, scissors, and all the craziness of that. And hopefully he gets some of the other stuff from him, including the one about the, the Toji middle management, where it's about the bad guy, but it's, he's just a middle management guy. Invest in Denpa books. I'm really excited. I'm happy that Ed is back, because he's one of my favorite uh, people who works in manga, and while he does have some questionable taste at times, for the most part, 9 out of 10 times, you will get something really good. Not, and yes, I know I've bitched about some of his manga, but whatever. So, with that in mind. So check out Denpa Books. I'll put a link in the show notes. So next, that was Friday. Friday was alright, like I said, in the middle of the Distance Worlds music, which was amazing. It was so beautiful. I, I It brought me back into why I love Final Fantasy, that music bringing you in there. And it covered everything from Final Fantasy 1 all the way through to Final Fantasy 15. All that music was there and it just was enrapturing. And also seeing a, a full orchestra in front of you, that just... Wow. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. So, despite the hiccup of not having my co-host showing up the next day, well, 
I had to deal with a bunch of panels, and I dealt with it the best I could because I am Zan. I've been doing this long enough. I've been doing it alone. So I opened up Saturday with one of our newer panels, one we talked about in Anime Next, and that is Captain Cyborgs and Cowgirls, the memorable women of sci-fi anime. And it went through pretty good. It was a lot of it was a lot of great discussion, and we focused on some aspects of the characters that I didn't focus on too much with Greta, but it flowed well, and while I do feel it would have been better with a, let's be honest, a woman at the helm, which is what it was, because she came up with the idea for the panel. I didn't. She did. But if she was there, I think we would have flowed a lot better, but it came out pretty good. The other panels that had happened that day was you had uh, the Mecha Fight Club discussion and Giant Robots panel. Uh, it's pitting Mecha against each other. You gotta love it. There's From Shoujo to Jose, which Aaron and Kenzie do panels, ran, and I've gotta say, I'm very happy to see that it was such a very unique panel on such a very, well, it's a rough subject to talk about because most people don't want to talk about Shoujo and Jose, and they covered it really well. They explained the difference. Most people say, it's just Shoujo. It's about girls. No, there's actually a distinct difference between the two fandoms and why they're different. Of course, you had the Shoji Kawamori uh, lineup for the signing, which unfortunately I could not do because of reasons. That really blew, but... There was the Studio Trigger uh, panel, which was cool because they had a live drawing. They were drawing live the actual imaging. They were doing a live sketch, and I've got to say, wow, we spent most of the time not listening to any of the, their new stuff. We were list- watching this guy draw in person as he's talking, and he's just drawing, and we're just watching it. It's really cool to see from nothing to him drawing it. <coughs> it's like watching a great painter. It just it envelops you. So, uh, what else did we have? We had Makoto Shinkai's Life, Love, and Lessons Learned. Uh, Makoto Shinkai Retrospective. Really well done. A little, um, a little sappy because, let's be honest, we all miss Makoto Shinkai, but it hit the right notes and it, the audience really enjoyed it. He had new anime for older fans. That's hit or miss this time. I think that it was a little bit of a miss because this person's taste in anime does not go with mine so is what it is uh the funimation industry panel let's be honest i couldn't get into it because it was freaking insanely long and i was trying and trying and trying to get in there but uh yeah enough said it was rough to get in there and i really tried to get to go but yeah uh you had of course our panel 22 manga and robot mangas or 22 mecha and robot manga recommendations for grown-ups which i've got to say Went really well this year. It was a lot of fun that so much had happened, and so many people enjoyed this panel. They really did. They had a blast with it. A lot of people were kind of wondering why I didn't include the uh, the From Under the Bed Horror and Anime Manga at this con. I just felt it was kind of, I need to take a break from it. I love that panel, but we'd be kind of hitting a lull in horror anime, and I, we got to take a break, a little bit of break, till some more good stuff comes out. Um, so far in the upcoming months, I don't know what's coming out, but nothing seems to catch my attention too much. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but the panel was great. The audience was great. I posted all the, the recommendations in the show notes and at www.spiker.com. You can check them out. Uh, there was David Bowie panel about David Bowie's influence from and to Japan. And as a David Bowie fan, rock on. But the star... The best thing I saw on Saturday, I've got to say. The best thing I've got to say. Gatai Mecca of 198X with Pat, Doug, Tom, and Dylan. I've got to say, this was an amazing panel that was a little unknown. You didn't think anyone was going to go there, but 100 people were there who were from the 80s. And just seeing all the old 80s panels and all the old 80s Mecca was astonishing. But they got the whole room. To sing along to Do You Remember Love. There's actually video on my Twitter account, at SpireKid, of them singing to Do You Remember Love. And wow. I would never have expected that. And I'm really happy about that. I really am. That 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 There's that response. It's like going to a weird concert. It was like, what the fuck are we doing here? But hey, it's anime and we all shared in the love, as they say. So from there, it's Sunday, and I had a new experimental panel. 
Now this panel was one I was playing with and working on. And I've got to admit, it did not go the way I expected. And now what do you mean by it did not go the way I expected? Well, uh, the panel was Guy Daigoji Incompetent Pilots of Mecha Anime Series, showing the worst of the worst, the most incompetent pilots, and giving reasons why they were incompetent. And first off, within 10 minutes, uh, some of the two of people I respect, understandably, maybe they had another panel, but most likely it's because they didn't like my panel. Uh, Daryl and Gerald from Anime World Order walked out of my panel. I think that they disagreed with my statement, and also because I didn't have anyone with me, it kind of didn't flow so well. I was having first panel jitters. I tried. It failed misery. Also, had a heckler who was giving me shit the entire panel, and I tried to ignore him. I tried to ignore that little fucker. But he was just like, oh, stop reading from the... We could read out loud. Like, dude, my notes are here. Shut the fuck up. I wanted to get down and punch the guy in the face. That's how pissed off I was going to get. But I held my composure. And I went through the whole panel. It was alright. Some people agreed. A lot of people disagreed. But the panel worked. I didn't expect the panel to get accepted. It was a gag panel. I wrote it down to be bullshit. And it got accepted. It was a little weird. So from there, uh, the other panels that were going on, there's how to make a better manga. That panel was intriguing, a little weird, but intriguing. It was basically the panel hosts venting about manga and his ideas on how to make it better, what works, what doesn't work, and I agree with some of it, didn't agree with some of it. Honestly, I didn't remember the panelist's name, and I had no interest to. So now the final panel we went to was the most fun. Uh, well, not the most fun. It was the best one for Sunday, and that was the discotheque panel. That's how I usually end Otakon. I go to discotheque, then I get in a car and I go home. That's always been the case, because after that, it's generally just the wrap-up, and everyone's getting ready to go home, and this and that. But discotheque panel this year made me so happy. And you could see my posts as I'm geeking out about it. And how I love how this panel, Mike Tool doesn't give a shit. He posts all these random things. He tells you about the nuts and bolts of creating releases, like why you need to package right and the auto remastering and checking subtitles, licensing announcements, uh, trolling the audience. He goes through all of this and he even just, oh, it's so ridiculous seeing all that craziness. And I didn't even talk about the Nozomi Entertainment panel because they're happening at the same time as Discotech. So, uh, but I did hear that Mazinger is getting re-released. So, well, yeah. So, the big release is for Discotech. We have, finally, a Blu-ray release of Galaxy Express 3.9, Cyborg 009, God Mars. You have Bobo, Bobo, Bo, Bo, which, let's be honest, that series, I don't know why it's popular, but it is, because it's nose hair kung fu with the Afro guy, but whatever. You got Gona, guys. Go very on. Uh, for me, the Lupin the Third nut. You have Lupin the Third: Legend of the Golden Babylon uh, in Blu-ray form. You have Lupin the Third's Blood Seal: The Eternal Mermaid. Still no word on when we're getting a sub for Lupin the Third Volume Five, which is the current series. We don't know. Hopefully soon. Baldios is coming out. Space Wolf Jesseon. Hells is coming out, which I didn't even think that was gonna get a release, but whatever. Voltus Five, which I've got to say, we 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 victory combine one two three. Oh, I was geeking so bad with that when I saw Voltus Five. I was like, do 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 Oh my Genshin days. Uh, Giant Robo, uh, is coming out finally in the full set, and the one that made me so happy. Kimagure Orange Road, a series which I've wanted to re review and talk about for years. And it's one of those ones that I heard about when I first started getting in the manga that everyone talked about that was the best thing. Because it's a it's a romance series that's so different and so unique. And it is. And it's getting the full release, and I'm so happy about that. I can't wait for it to come out. I really can't. You're getting the series, the OVA series, and the first movie in two collections on Blu-ray. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. I really can't. And I gotta say, that made Otakon spectacular for me. I've got, I've, you know, I keep saying I gotta say, but that is what it is. It's the panel which you talk about, which is a blast. And uh, what was the other one? 
and the convention overall was unique for the panel aspect. Now let's get into the designs of the characters themselves and the people who were there in cosplay. Shall we? Um, let's be honest. The most notable one, honestly, was Doug Wilder, a uh, friend of the show and uh, staffer from Anime Boston. He was dressed up as the White Bases cook where they need more salt. It was pretty badass that you saw him like that. It really was. Hmm. Sadly, I have no... Yeah, well, my pictures have disappeared. I can't find any of my pictures, which is really unusual. Maybe I put it under... Maybe here. Hold on one second. Ah, here we go. Here we go. So the big thing at the convention, obviously, was a lot of My Hero Academia. I saw a lot of Gran Torinos. I saw some Mount Ladies. I saw a couple Spider-Men walking around. And I saw the Kool-Aid Man walking around, which was really weird. Guy just was Kool-Aid Man. Cosplays were decent this year. A lot of people were just kind of milling about. Nothing too extravagant about Otakon this year. There was a couple of unique people there. I mean, there was an Aku walking around, and I think there was a Bell walking around, like armor in a Princess Peach in armor, but nothing too outstanding. Same thing with the Artist Alley. There were some great artists, but no one I wanted to buy from. And the dealer's room, same problem as last time. I mean, yeah, Discotech was there. I went on to buy stuff from Discotech, but... No other real manga people were there. I remember when it used to be I'd go there and I'd be able to buy 50 billion mangas. Be like, oh, I'm going home with uh, two bags full of mangas. And now it's, there's, there wasn't much. There were some cool things in the dealer's room. Don't get me wrong. There were some really cool things in the dealer's room to, to see. There was the dragon, uh, Shenlong Dragon Ball that was floating in the air. That was cool. But... Nothing of more... No. It just seems that dealer's rooms as of the last couple of years... I don't know if it's because of the digital aspect... But they've been... They've been lacking. A lot of... When you see more than five mystery boxes... You have a problem. That's one thing I would definitely change. Try to get more booksellers. Try to get something else in the dealer's room. Something great. I want to be able to be like... Ooh, this is great. I love it. But... I just... I wasn't feeling it this year. I really wasn't feeling the dealer's room. And that is a shame because dealer's room is one of the parts that you expect to see in the, at the con. As for showrooms, I don't even think there was anything majorly showing. Oh, uh, one second. There is a, a furry animal trying to attack me right now. All right, I'm paying attention to you. Don't worry. So, yeah. So... From what I expect from Otakon, I so over over. If you've never been to Otakon before, I highly recommend going. It is a great experience. There is so much to see. There's a great game room. There's a lot of art stuff in the artist alley. I will say there is the silent auction, which is always a great hit. Um, I've just become snobby with my art stuff. That's what the truth. I've been snobby with my art stuff, and my finances are a little low as a moment because of recent move, which we talked about in a couple of early panels also some other stuff's going on in september don't want to talk about that till later but yeah so overall otakon really good experience uh the lines were done a lot better security was pretty on point didn't hear about any major issues on my end a lot of my friends who were there had a blast uh, let me know what you think about Otakon this year. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Uh, let me know. Zan at Sparkin.com. That's X-A-N, not Z-A-N. At Sparkin.com. Or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let me know what you think. I give this convention a solid would go again. But not next year. I'll wait a couple years, but I'll go again eventually. It's not a I have to go again right now. It's I had a little bit of the con funk, but we'll see. Anyway, I guess that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, thank you for listening to this podcast. As always, uh, we got some new episodes coming up. Sorry I haven't been releasing any manga reviews. Things have been crazy, like I said, the move and other stuff. But we will talk about that more later. This is your host, Zan, saying catch you guys next time. I'm Gonsville, and uh, keep reading manga. Later, guys.